to a millionfold because of uh, things like uh, Smarter Planet, the fact that uh, we will soon have 50 billion devices uh, somehow that collect data and that uh, generate data. And uh, that explosion of data really needs to new applications that become possible, poses new technical challenges. And then at the highest level, really, how will we interact with uh, these computers in the future? How will we be able to program these? Um, these systems, I believe, will evolve from something that uh, so far have only been programmed to something that uh, will become learning systems. And uh, some of it is uh, based on the kind of device architectures that we have. Some of it is based on the kind of software <coughs> that we put on these systems that we will have programmed still, but it's going to be learning software. And I will now uh, essentially spend the next 10 minutes uh, roughly giving just some examples uh, how this thousandfold, for argument's sake, improvement will happen over the next 10 years and give some examples of research projects uh, that we work on to deal with this. When you look at uh, the devices, um, um, one of the problems that we currently have with uh, computer chips is they're already quite power hungry. If you look at the power that gets consumed by uh, commercial data centers, it's 2% uh, of uh, the world's energy, the same as commercial airlines. Don't think that uh, while cloud is somewhere in the, in the cloud, it doesn't consume power. It consumes a lot of power. That's one of the challenges that we'll need to meet if we really want to grow this uh, still in capability by a factor of 1,000. We'll need to come up with devices that uh, are a lot less energy hungry, both uh, for building the big servers, but also for building mobile devices. Uh, our cell, phone, cell phones, the smartphones nowadays, if we're lucky, they last a day if we use them. Um, but usually they even run out uh, sooner than that. That's something that uh, we are involved in in a project. Here you see the logo, Steeper. Um, basically, it's an EU-funded FP7 project. It's a big conglomerate of uh, companies and universities, uh, research institutions working on it to, in fact, generate uh, and create the next generation of transistors that uh, are a lot less power hungry and uh, perform better than what they currently do. The other picture you see there is an investment that IBM has made in Zurich, uh, a public-private partnership. Uh, this is a nanotechnology research uh, center that we've uh, built up together with ETH Zurich, the Polytechnic uh, School of Switzerland uh, in, in Zurich, to do research, joint research, on the future of nanotechnology, be it sensors, be it also faster chips. Um, at the next uh, layer of systems, I claim that the systems in the next 10 years will be a thousandfold more powerful. But that will require, in fact, a lot of technological innovation that uh, we will need to work on. Um, I um, will mention two things where we've been involved in. One that uh, just came to completion, which is uh, the logo on the right where it says LRZ, which is the um, public um, data center in Bavaria, that uh, high performance computing center that serves the universities in Bavaria and in particular in the, in the Munich area, where we just inaugurated a hot water cooled supercomputer uh, this summer. It's Europe's fastest supercomputer. And it's the interesting thing about it is it does not require primary energy to cool it anymore. You can use hot water that's uh, 50, 60 degrees warm, heat it up uh, in, the, in the computer, and then use the hot water for district heating. Um, and if you get more sophisticated, you can also use the hot water for cooling those parts of the data center that uh, still are traditionally air-cooled by powering the air conditioning with hot water. Another project uh, that you see there, where it says SKA is uh, square kilometer array, which is a big radio telescope that um, um, the um, Ast Astronomy Institutes uh, um, of major Western countries 
uh, really want to build. It's a large uh, physics experiment, just like CERN. The idea here with the Square Kilometer Array is uh, to build this radio telescope in the Southern Hemisphere to really look at Big Bang. It will generate uh, information to the tune of 10 times what you currently have on the internet as traffic. So just imagine 10 times uh, the internet traffic uh, in, in such, a, such a radio telescope. That will require processing power at the excess scale. And that's, again, it has to be low power. That's a project we're involved in in, in the Netherlands with, the, with Astron, the um, Dutch uh, um, Astronomy Institute, to really build build out the technology that, uh, and create the technology that will be re required to run something like the Square Kilometer Array. What's interesting about this project is we will create a user platform that will allow then companies as well to innovate on that platform and make use of that platform as part of this uh, research project. Uh, the research project itself is called Dome. When we talk about uh, big data, as said, and, and I think it's plausible, if you have look at all the devices and sensors that we have out there, the video cameras, etc., we're moving to something that is not only big, but it's also going to be fast data. Fast data, again, if you look at the square kilometer array, there's no way you will store that information. You will need to process it in real time and condense it down to something that's more uh, manageable and more storable. Um, and uh, you will analyze the data as it comes, and so that's the, the fast piece. And an example of uh, where we are involved in, in both in generating big data is uh, one of the candidates for the future emerging technologies FET flagship projects uh, that the EU is funding called Guardian Angels, where the idea is really to build sensors that get deployed on the body to um, help with uh, well, ambient-assisted living, aging, et cetera, et cetera. That will generate huge amounts of data. It will be research in energy efficiency again because those sensors will not be powered with batteries, but ideally they'll capture the energy from the body, um, various ways of, of doing so, um, and uh, will generate huge amounts of data. An area where we are involved in consuming huge amounts of data is uh, our Irish uh, research lab in Dublin um, that uh, we opened there specifically because the city of Dublin was one of the first ones to really give access to its uh, data and allow for novel applications to be built and analytics to be performed against that data. Now that's something that many other cities have uh, taken up. My home city in, in Zurich as well this summer launched something, Open Data Zurich, to in fact uh, enable an indigenous uh, IT industry that builds apps around open data and then uh, branches out from there to other parts of the world. The last area, moving from programming computers to building computers that can learn is a very wide area of, of research. Learning itself is not really fully understood, at least not the way humans learn and the way our brain functions, which is the ultimate computer to some extent. The brain runs on 20 watts of power. And imagine what we can do with our brains. Uh, if you look at uh, the computer that already was quite amazing, this Watson computer that my colleagues in the US built um, to play Jeopardy, that ran on 85 uh, kilowatts of power. And all it could do is play Jeopardy. Um, it couldn't really do much more, couldn't walk. In fact, the questions had to be typed into the computer, so it wasn't uh, doing speech understanding yet. Um, so there is a, a huge uh, gap still that will need to be bridged. But what's interesting about Watson was that it was built, in fact, on open source. It was built on, on Linux, uh, UEMA, um, Unstructured Information Management Architecture, something that IBM open sourced a few years ago. And it enabled, in fact, a whole bunch of collaborators, universities, um, to help with building out the Watson computer, this deep, deep Q&A system. Um, where we're moving towards uh, is really learning systems in the future. Watson was already learning along the lines of uh, the more it played, the better its statistical machine learning engines 
got tuned to know which knowledge sources uh, it could trust more than other knowledge sources for certain domains of questions. Now, that was learning in the statistical way it was still programmed. Now we're working on better understanding the brain. Again, one of the uh, FET flagship projects, the candidates, uh, um, is the Human Brain Project and the precursor where we already collaborate uh, with uh, the EPFL, the Federal Technical School in, in Switzerland in, in Lausanne, is the Blue Brain Project. Basically, uh, the idea behind it is to model, in fact, all the electrochemical uh, phenomena that take place in the brain um, in a computer. And uh, human brain is essentially just to scale this up to the dimensions of uh, the entire brain there. It was just uh, part of the, the cortex uh, that got modeled. That's on the side of really understanding the learning systems. On the side of building systems that can learn, we have a project that we're involved in in the US. Again, it's a consortium called Synapse. The idea being to use the rudimentary understanding that we have of neural networks uh, and really build chips uh, in silicon based on neural networks, uh, synapses and neurons to the scale. And again, the roadmap that uh, they claim to have is uh, in 10 years time, they will have as many neurons and synapses as we think the human brain has. It will not be a human brain. It will be a computer that has that many synapses and neurons. And the challenge will be how you train that computer, how you in, in, in make it learn something and, and how you make use of it. So those are the, some of the examples I wanted to give you in where our research is going and we can only do this with partners and a lot of the stuff that's far out is really, for better or worse, uh, government funded um, and is, is a requirement to really move the needle forward. And I think as uh, our industry really, we're really moving into a new era. We started out with just counting things, the tabulating era. The computing era, that's where we're still in and that's uh, still gonna go on for some time. But I think what uh, we're moving towards is this, what we call the cognitive systems era. Computers that uh, will use a lot less power, will be a lot more intelligent, uh, will be learning, not be programmed anymore fully, and uh, will be, have an exciting time ahead of us, I think. Uh, just think of what uh, we now have, what we didn't have 10 years ago. Imagine a thousandfold more performance in 10 years from now, what we'll have then. Thank you.